no one takes you off of these medications. Yeah. You know, psychiatrists, unfortunately, are not trained for the most part on taking you off of medications. They're trained to prescribe medications. Yeah, that's true. I mean, I've, I've literally never heard someone say that. So that's that's the question I want to ask. And we've talked about this before, but like, you know, a lot of people struggling with depression Mm -hmm. Uh, and anxiety are on some type of SSRI. Yeah. Right. So they could obviously benefit from an MDMA therapy session, but because you're, you know, you're already taking something that uh, is interacting with your serotonin um, transmitters now? Uh, Receptors. Receptors. Yeah. Um, It's not, you're not going to get the the full effect of the MDMA. Right. Right. So then you, you have this, the alternative of ketamine therapy. Right, right, which you can take even though you're on an SSRI, correct? You can take ketamine while you're on an SSRI, yeah. And and ketamine is the only thing that's legal now to right. do in a clinical yeah. setting, right? So you can't you can't currently in the United States go to a doctor's office and be like, hey, can you prescribe me MDMA? Right, um, but, but potentially in the future, like a year or two, it seems. Hopefully, right? we're gonna, it, it's looking like the FDA will yeah. grant it breakthrough designation. Yeah. I think it's just a matter of having one or two good quality trials come in and, and be published in a good journal. Right. And then I think that that will probably happen. Yeah. Um, but I'm be- just saying, like, that's that's very good to hear for people because I've, I've heard a lot of people like, yeah, I, wanna, I want to do MDMA therapy when it's legal. Yeah. But I'm on an SSRI and I don't want to come off of it. Right. You know, because they're scared. Yeah, you know, maybe they've they've dealt with uh, some suicidal uh, thoughts, and uh, or you know, they just once they're off the you know, the antidepressant, they, they just get back into their uh, yeah that dark dark part of the mind. Sometimes, yeah, it's also really hard to get off of antidepressants, and and unfortunately, I think that these are are issues that aren't discussed enough when people are prescribed antidepressants, oftentimes from their primary care provider. Yeah. They're not really told that, hey, you're taking this. You you might have severe withdrawal effects. This is called discontinuation syndrome when you try to stop taking it. Um, so you could have brain zaps. That's like the most common discontinuation syndrome side effect. Which What's that? It, it's exactly what it sounds like. It feels like your brain's being zapped for a second or two. Wow. Um, you can have, you know, kind of a reversal of all the side effects that you have when you take the SSRI. So your mood, sometimes your mood will stay um, kind of at where, wherever it is um, before you stop taking it. Sometimes you'll relapse into the depression or anxiety. Um insomnia headaches grogginess you know the all of the the whole list of side effects you can have with um with discontinuation yeah, syndrome as well. a whole list so i stopped i was on um a high dose of prozac and i gained 60 pounds this is when i was an undergrad mm. and um i went to the doctor and i was like hey is there any other like non-ssri you can take um uh, i can take i'm um, i've like you know, I'm like 60 pounds overweight and I'm like 24, you know, it's not a good place to be in. And they were like, no, Prozac doesn't do that to you. And I was like, no, it does. I'm like, like nothing has changed. And this was, this was told to me by multiple doctors. So then I was like, fuck it. I'm just going to do this myself. And I, I just kind of created like a, a small taper schedule of decreasing the amount of Prozac I was taking. Obviously the weight just fell off. Um, but, and I felt like shit, like mm. I couldn't sleep and I had the brain zaps. It was, it was a really horrible experience that lasted for a few months. Jeez. And, um, you know, I'm glad that when I took the Prozac, it got me out of the depressive episode I was in, but I really wish that someone had versed me in what was going to happen. And the fact that if I, the fact that like, no one takes you off of these medications. Yeah. You know, psychiatrists, unfortunately, are not trained for the most part on taking you off of medications. They're trained to prescribe medications. Yeah. That's true. I mean, I've, I've literally never heard someone say that. Yeah. But that's true. And, and I think I think the way we're, we, ca- we have it in our society is a little backward. So like Japan, for instance, TMS is considered a first line treatment for depression, which I think makes sense because if you have depression, why would you 
why would you go with the chronic lifelong treatment right. if there is just an acute treatment and you can just deal with this in you know six to eight weeks and and move on with your life? Right. Why are we doing these things that you have to take for the rest of your lives that have zero long term safety data? <laughs> You know, like like <laughs> literally yeah. there's not a single like 20 year study on what is happening in your brain if you take SSRIs every single day. Mm. Eh. <laughs> mm. <laughs> so for some people, the, you know, the benefit outweighs the risk, right? Like right. if you're like severely suicidal, then, yeah. you know, that that's great. It's it's probably the best option for you. I think for other people, it, it makes more sense to do like an acute course of ketamine or maybe in the future, acute course of psilocybin or TMS, as opposed to, you know, going to this now older class of medications. Yeah, man, I, I agree. And I, I find that, uh, you know, the, the same people who, you know, back in the 90s, early 2000s, mm-hmm. uh, who started as a kid, you know, taking some type of SSRI has a chance now at not going right. down that same path. Right. You know? Yeah. 